Hi, I'm David Booth. I'll go through a little bit about the Yosemite Project Roadmap, then talk about the ONC Roadmap, and do a comparison of the two as best I can. So imagine a world in which all healthcare systems speak the same language with the same meanings covering all of healthcare. Wouldn't that be great? Well, that isn't what we have today. Right now we have a Tower of Babel of zillions of different languages and vocabularies being spoken by different uh, healthcare systems. The President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology in December 2020, uh, excuse me, 2010, put out a report that identified this problem and recognized the need for a nationwide adoption of a universal exchange language for healthcare information. In response to this, in 2013, a group of us, including Stan Huff, Josh Mandel, Emery Fry, Don Connor Dowling, and myself, arranged a workshop at the Semantic Technology and Business Conference in San Francisco to discuss the theme of RDF as a universal healthcare exchange language. I'll talk about RDF a little bit more in a moment. But all of us uh, who arranged this workshop had background in RDF and recognized that it could be very useful as a universal healthcare exchange language. The workshop was attended by 32 people, and the, the culmination of the workshop was that we put together what we ended up calling the Yosemite Manifesto, named after the conference room that we were uh, scheduled to meet in. We actually met in a different conference room called the Plaza A, but we liked the name Yosemite a lot better, so we stuck with that. This uh, Yosemite Ma Manifesto calls out several principles for achieving universal healthcare exchange using RDF as a, a universal language. And in particular, it calls out the idea of using uh, RDF as the best available candidate for a universal healthcare exchange language. There are a number of reasons why, um, which I won't go into at the moment. And so we put that out there, calling this the Yosemite Manifesto, and it has collected over 100 plus uh, signatures of various thought leaders in healthcare and technology. And you can go to yosemitemanifesto.org and take a look at it and add your name to it if you'd like. So that was in 2013. The following year, we followed up on that and said, okay, we need to sort of operationalize these principles into a roadmap, into saying how to actually do this using RDF as a, as a basis. And so this led to what we're calling the Yosemite Project. It was launched in August of 2014. The mission of the Yosemite Project is to achieve semantic interoperability of all structured healthcare information. We're not just talking about some subset, some common denominator subset. We're talking about all structured healthcare information. And when I say structured healthcare information, I'm distinguishing it from unstructured healthcare information, such as uh, a doctor's sort of random handwritten prose notes or uh, dictated prose, things like this. The strategy for doing this is using RDF as a universal information representation. And I'll get back to this concept in a moment. So what is RDF? Uh, well, it's a W3C standard, an international standard. It's been around, around for over 10 years, used in quite a wide variety of fields or domains. And a key interesting aspect of it is that it captures information content independent of data format. Uh, it means that you can have different source data formats that really represent the same RDF information content. So for example, we might have uh, an HL7 message. HL7 is used a lot in healthcare. It's a standards organization, version 2. Uh, whatever looks like uh, what's shown on the left. It's got these uh, cryptic things with the vertical bars as separators between uh, little data items. And that could be represented in terms of its RDF information content as shown at the bottom of this slide, what we call an RDF graph. Well, the exact same information might actually be represented in a, uh, a more recent format that is being developed also by the HL7 organization called FHIR, F -H -I -R, and it has an XML-based representation that looks something like uh, what's shown on the right. The point is that the syntactic differences between these 
really don't matter when we're concerned about the information content. And that is what RDF captures, is the information content independent of the data format. So what this means is that you can have different parties speaking different formats or using different formats, but meaning the same thing, having the same concepts in mind that has the same RDF information representation or the same information content. So maybe one party likes to use Fire, maybe another one party likes to use HL7 version 2 point whatever, but they can still carry the same information content represented as RDF. So the basic idea of RDF as a universal information representation is given some piece of data, you should be able to answer the question, what does this data mean? And you should be able to answer that in terms of its equivalent RDF information content that is independent of the data format in which that data was encoded. Now, obviously, you do have to understand what that data format is so that you can determine what the corresponding RDF information content is. But the point is that RDF captures the information content. So another aspect of RDF that is also critical for addressing this problem and this need for a universal healthcare information uh, language is the fact that RDF is what I would call multi-schema friendly, which means that you can have data that was represented in different data models, such as some blue model or some red model or some green model that might have all been developed independently. And they're not the same model, but they have relationships between them. And the data that is represented using these different data models, once it has been um, interpreted as RDF, or once we look at the, the RDF information content of that information, can all be represented together and can coexist, can peacefully coexist with each other. And the different pieces or portions of the data, uh, the relationships between parts of those data models or between the data models themselves can also be captured and represented in RDF as well. So for example, a town uh, might in, in one data model might be the same as what's called city in a different data model or vocabulary, or the notion of a full name in the red data model might be the same as the combination of first name and last name in the blue model. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because different vocabularies and data models are used. It's also important in order to um, translate or make inferences between the different data models and vocabularies. So for example, if you were given a uh, some information about a town in the red model, then using inference, you can automatically infer that that would be the city in the blue model, given that we have that, re that relationship expressed between town and city. Or if you have first name and last name in the blue model, you can infer what the full name is in the red model using inference. So RDF supports inference. This is very important for being able to span between different data models and vocabularies. Okay, why do we care about this? We care about this because we want to achieve semantic interoperability between healthcare systems. Now, there are various different definitions of semantic interoperability. Um, I like this one uh, from Wikipedia because it's very succinct. Uh, it's the ability of computer systems. We're talking about computer exchange of data, right? Not human interpreted, but computer interpreted. Ability of computer systems to exchange data with unambiguous shared meaning. So we want those computers to be able to understand the meaning of the data that they are exchanging. How do we do this? There are two basic approaches that you can use. One is the what I would call the standards uh, approach which means you, you make everybody speak the same language, okay? And in terms of computers, what this means is that you make them speak the same data models and vocabularies. So that's one basic way to do it. The other way you can achieve interoperability, if for whatever reason you cannot use the same standards, 
is translations. And what that means in terms of computer systems is it means translating between data models and vocabularies, between different data models or different vocabularies or various combinations of them. Now, obviously, we prefer standards. It's much more efficient if everybody just speaks the same language. But there are some very fundamental problems with relying only on standards. First of all, there's a whole lot of them. In the uh, unified uh, medical language uh, system, there's over 100 standard vocabularies listed. And each one of these standards tends to be a bit of an island. Sometimes there are connections and relationships with other standards, but they have much too much of a tendency to be islands. Well, the idea uh, with using RDF to capture the information content is that it enables bridges, semantic bridges, between these different standards. Okay, a second fundamental issue with standardization is that it takes time. And the more comprehensive you try to be in your standardization effort, the longer it takes. A third issue with standardization is that even if you do come up with a great standard that you want everybody to use, it takes time for all of those parties to modernize and to start adopting it. They can't all just adopt it all at once in one big bang. You're going to have different parties adopting it at different times. Right? This is just inevitable. A fourth reason is that there are so many different use cases that have different requirements. They need different data. They need a different granularity of data. And they need different representations of data, different data models and things like that um, to fit their purposes. You just don't have a one-size-fits-all kind of situation. There are too many different use cases and needs for data in healthcare, spanning the entire healthcare universe. In this little illustration, for example, we have uh, in, on the left blood pressure represented as a single string, uh, 120 over 70. And on the right, it has been broken up into discrete elements of, one se of uh, 120 separately represented uh, from the diastolic of 70. And furthermore, on the right, we've got a little bit more granularity. We've also got the body position indicated explicitly in that model on the right. Now, the problem is that you cannot fit all use cases into one data model or vocabulary, right? It just is not possible to do that. And what happens if you try is, I think, very nicely illustrated in this classic uh, cartoon, XKCD cartoon. There's 14 competing standards. 14, that's ridiculous. We have to develop one universal standard that covers everyone's use cases. Yeah, and they agree. And pretty soon there are 15 competing standards. And sadly, that is the case. Um, and the reason for that is because, again, it is not possible to fit all of those use cases in the same uh, data model and vocabulary. Finally, another fundamental reason why standards by themselves will never be sufficient to address the interoperability problem is that standards themselves evolve. Doug Frisma likes to say that the only standard that doesn't evolve is one that nobody uses, uh, which is very true. The ones that are being used are evolving. And uh, Dr. Raphael Richards at the VA took a look at some of the common vocabularies used in healthcare and what the uh, publishers of those uh, vocabularies said about the rate of change of those vocabularies and looked at them. And they typically ranged from about 3 to 8% per year. So this kind of change is inevitable. Stand standards do change. The moral of the story here is that standards are essential for interoperability, but by themselves they are not enough. Translation is unavoidable. You have to also have translation. So any realistic strategy for semantic interoperability must address both standards and translations. It's not a choice. You do translations only when you have to, okay? But you do have to. 
Okay, so this leads to the Yosemite Project Roadmap. Here is a little uh, visual indication of the roadmap, and you'll see that it has both a standards track and a translations track. It addresses both components. And it starts off with RDF as a universal information representation to use RDF as a common semantic foundation that can span across different standards and different data formats and even across different data models and vocabularies. And I won't have time to get into all the details of this roadmap, but basically a second component is uh, RDF mappings for the various proprietary and standard uh, data representations that are used in healthcare. Uh, translations between the various data models that, and vocabularies that are used, because as I pointed out, some of these translations are simply unavoidable. Um, fourth component is crowdsourcing uh, these translation rules and that the use of RDF as a universal information representation is a key enabler that will allow these translation rules to be crowdsourced. Next is coming up with the uh, standard definitions in RDF and AL so that various standards can be interpreted in terms of their corresponding RDF and AL. AL OWL is an ontology language that builds on top of RDF. I won't have time get, to get into that. And let's see, next is um, facilitating uh, the convergence of standards with this collaborative standards convergence. I mentioned that the UMLS lists over 100 different vocabularies, and there's a lot of overlap between them, which means that there are different concepts, excuse me, in different vocabularies, there are often the same concept used, or very similar concept, but not defined exactly the same way. Sort of overlapping, but not, uh, not exactly the same. So ideally, we do want convergence so that they are the same across vocabularies. Finally, another key element is interoperability policies. This is a non-technical element, but this is absolutely essential for two reasons. One, we need policies that reduce the barriers to interoperability. For example, reducing IP barriers, uh, intellectual property barriers to the use of standards that are used for interoperability. And second, um, we need to have policies that provide incentives, either carrots or sticks or both, to encourage interoperability. And the reason for that is that there is no natural business incentive for interoperability, right? There's no natural business incentive for a healthcare provider to make its data compatible with its competitor, okay? So incentives, carrots or sticks, are absolutely essential to solving this problem. So there's briefly the Yosemite Project Roadmap. Let's move on now and talk about the ONC Roadmap. So the ONC Roadmap was published in a 166-page document. There's also a two-page quick reference that you can look at, that you can download from the ONC site. Uh, and there's also a what they call an infographic, which is a, a tall and, and a nicely produced uh, graphic that kind of illustrates this. And I think the idea is you're supposed to print it out and hang it on your wall. Uh, it was too tall to kind of fit on this one page here, so I split it into two to show it on this page. So what's in the ONC roadmap? Well, first of all, it's based on a vision uh, for health IT, which they're calling the learning health system. This was defined by the Institute of Medicine, and it's a really good idea. I'll get to that. Uh, in just a moment, I'll say just a, just a tiny bit more about it. So it's based on that vision, the learning health system, and it sets interoperability goals, uh, both uh, three-year goals, six-year goals, and 10-year uh, goals. It uh, includes a very good problem description of the various components, the, the complications, the stakeholders, and the various issues involved in achieving interoperability in healthcare and it lays out solution guidance involving uh, governance, uh, standards uh, for achieving interoperability, and the various policies that are needed for achieving interoperability. So it's quite comprehensive what this roadmap uh, covers, the ground that it covers. Um, 
I said I wanted to mention just a little bit about the learning health system. This is defined by the Institute of Medicine. This graphic did not come from the ONC's roadmap, although it would be a good idea to include it so that people know more what that's, this is about. But it, uh, it's defined by the Institute of Medicine. Uh, it's kind of like this virtuous cycle where data is collected in the process of, of performing healthcare it's used to improve the science of healthcare uh, based on evidence, and that is used to then improve our healthcare. So, some of the strategic goals that the ONC roadmap lays out are summarized in this graphic that I grabbed from page 16 of the roadmap. Starts off with collecting healthcare data and expanding the ability to collect healthcare data uh, electronically. Um, ensuring that it can be shared, and this is where interoperability comes into play, um, shared between healthcare providers, individuals, community, various different uses, a whole lot of different uses of that healthcare data. And the objective then is to improve the use of that data, um, strengthening the healthcare delivery system so that, uh, so that people can re directly receive uh, better care based on that data. Um, improving the health of populations, and then also, and I'm very glad that they called this out, uh, advancing the, the research and the scientific knowledge uh, involved in healthcare, uh, biomedical research, all sorts of research, that then obviously feeds back in to improving our, our healthcare. So the healthcare information, you know, starts with the collection, but then it goes all through this entire sort of ecosystem. Here's a timeline that the ONC uh, lays out, and um, again, there's a, the, the roadmap covers quite a wide scope of the different aspects of the interoperability problems that it addresses, um, including governance and exchanging uh, and trust communities, uh, standards, um, uh, regulatory issues, uh, and, uh, and getting care providers engaged and things like this. Now, I mentioned, I'm mentioning that the, the ONC roadmap is very broad in scope. It, it tries to address really the whole problem of interoperability in healthcare. And this uh, that I grabbed from the quick reference uh, on page two of the quick reference gives you a little bit of an idea of the scope of this roadmap. In some sense, it's kind of broken down into these five areas that are listed on the left. And there's actually a sixth one um, that is not listed here, but which is actually measurement, which is actually uh, measuring and evaluating the success of this uh, interoperability roadmap itself. Like how well is it doing? How much in interoperability is being achieved? Okay. So that one's not listed here, but it is also a component in the roadmap as a whole. So to give you a feel for um, what's covered here, so there's like 10 pages that talk about the rules of engagement, 15 pages that talk about the, uh, the how to create a supportive uh, business, clinical, cultural, and regulatory environments, 22 pages uh, addressing privacy and security protections for health information, because in order to uh, be able to kind of share and reuse uh, healthcare data, we do have to make sure that, that privacy and, and security are, are respected. Otherwise, it is not going to get passed around and used appropriately. Um, three pages on certification and testing, and then 25 pages on uh, core technical standards and functions. So, in comparing the ONC roadmap with the Yosemite Project roadmap, the Yosemite Project roadmap focuses in on a narrow part of this overall uh, list of aspects involved with interoperability. The Yosemite Project focuses really on this area down here, which falls under core technical standards and functions, and the closest we can come here to saying where it fits in more specifically is consistent data formats and semantics. That's not quite the right way to say it, but that's kind of the, 
closest we can come in terms of how this is uh, written on the ONC roadmap. But anyway, this slide is showing that the Yosemite project roadmap on the right is focused on a sort of a, a narrow slice of what the ONC roadmap addresses. It's focused on the part that is uh, pertaining to uh, technical standards and functions. So the ONC roadmap essentially addresses all aspects of interoperability, but the goal of the ONC roadmap is much less ambitious than the Yosemite Project roadmap in that the goal is to achieve, to, to achieve interoperability of a common subset of healthcare data. And it's a federally sponsored uh, program. In contrast with the Yosemite Project roadmap, it focuses in on the technical problem of information interoperability and looks in detail about how that problem can be solved. And its goal is to achieve interoperability of all structured healthcare information, not just a little subset, but all of it. And it's a collaborative sort of bottom-up initiative that's not uh, federally sponsored. Okay, so first of all, some comments um, about the ONC roadmap uh, as a whole. I think it's great uh, that uh, that the ONC is doing this, uh, is undertaking this roadmap. Um, I think it's great how the, the ONC roadmap is trying to engage and address all of the stakeholders in this problem. Uh, I think it's also really good how the governance strategy that is articulated by the ONC roadmap is intended to be a joint public and private governance strategy. Again, engaging all of the stakeholders. Um, it's got very good attention to standards in there. That's really good. I'm really glad to see also that there is a, a focus on policy initiatives that's appropriate and recognizing the, the need for policy incentives that uh, interoperability will not just happen on its own. Uh, as I pointed out, um, you know, there is no natural business incentive for this kind of interoperability. And they also uh, do call out the need for removing barriers to interoperability. So these are some really good things uh, in there. Um, I do have some suggestions, and I'll go into some of more of these as I go along, but here's one of them uh, as a whole. Um, they use this phrase, uh, rules of the road, a fair amount, and it's not clear what that phrase means, whether it's talking about policies, the governance process, or exactly what. So um, anyway, not a big deal, but it would be good to clarify that. Next, kudo uh, is identifying the need for interoperability incentives. I just wanted to say a little bit more about that. Um, page 38, for example, the they identify that uh, a key barrier is the fee-for-service payment model that is currently used uh, uh, almost ubiquitously in this country. Um, and there's a number of other mentions in various places that this really represents a key barrier because it puts the incentive in the wrong direction. Okay, so um, I think this is really good that they're calling out this, uh, this problem. And uh, I would suggest that uh, that they go farther on this and uh, do more on stronger incentive policies. Um, another thing that I th think is really good is um, there's an attention to uh, empowering the individual uh, and the in individual's uh, healthcare information. And I think that's really good. Uh, I think this is increasingly important with a very mobile population, people typically receiving care from a lot of different providers, uh, the costs rising, of course, and also with patient-generated health data, you know, things like Fitbit and all sorts of things uh, way beyond that uh, to uh, home monitors and things like that. Um, one suggestion I would have is that it's important to recognize that this that the healthcare data uh, when in empowering individuals and giving an individual access to their healthcare data, that data needs to be accessible both to humans, for a human to be able to read it and understand it, but it also needs to be machine understandable. It needs to be machine interoperable, right? So that I can take my healthcare data and I can bring it 
to somebody else, uh, to another healthcare provider, and they can use it. Or I can even do my own analysis on it. Now, obviously, not everybody's going to do this. Maybe it's only one in a thousand or one in ten thousand people who would ever do that. Okay, but that's what causes really great in innovation is when somebody does something that's really interesting and then it takes off. So a little bit more on that, again, similar theme is providing access to that personal health information. And uh, one of the quotes, page 31, is that uh, the, the roadmap says that no policy, business, operational, or technical barriers that are not required by law should be built to prevent information from appropriately flowing across geographic, uh, health IT developer, and organizational boundaries in support of patient care. I think that is a very important principle. The only suggestion I would make about that is that I think that it's important to broaden that and not just talk narrowly about in support of patient care, but this should apply to all aspects of healthcare, right? Including research, quality measurement, all ways in which healthcare information is used. We need to break down those barriers. Okay, um, another kudo here. Uh, the roadmap encourages open exchange, uh, saying there should be neutrality in the exchange of personal health information. Okay, that's good. Um, one suggestion I would have here is I think it is very important to encourage free and open interoperability standards. Um, right now, the uh, interoperability standards that we have are not all free and open. Uh, there are royalties associated with some of them. Uh, in other cases, there are other licensing barriers that get in the way that, that uh, prevent the, the free and open use of them. Um, so the ONC can take, I think, a very important leading role here in um, encouraging the use of free and open interoperability standards. There should be no IP barriers to interoperability. Okay, um, I'm gonna now zero in a little bit more on the area of kind of overlap between the ONC roadmap and the Yosemite Project roadmap. Just make a few more comments. Within the category of standards, the ONC roadmap identifies these various categories. And these top two are kind of the area where the Yosemite Project addresses. Because the Yosemite Project addresses the uh, information interoperability problem. It doesn't address the transport, it doesn't address security, it doesn't address services, it, it addresses specifically the problem of information interoperability. Okay, so here is a difference. Um, the ONC roadmap focuses on achieving a common clinical data set. This is a, a common denominator kind of approach to achieving interoperability. Um, and here's a quote from page 18. This roadmap focuses on decisions, actions, and actors required to establish the best minimum level of interoperability across the health IT ecosystem. So this is, this is different. This is different than what the Yosemite Project Roadmap addresses. The Yosemite Project Roadmap, uh, the mission is to achieve interoperability of all healthcare information, is not using a common denominator kind of approach. This common denominator kind of approach is what tries to force all users or all use cases into one box, and they don't fit when you try to take that kind of approach. And this is what I, one of the things that I tried to point out a little bit earlier. There is a little bit of a, of a misconception about the, how to achieve interoperability at the technical level. There is a very common assumption that standards are the way to, to achieve interoperability. And standards, as I pointed out earlier, are, they are essential to achieving interoperability, but they are not all that's needed, okay? And one of the misconceptions that comes up is an assumption that um, in order to achieve interoperability, we have to have the same data format. And, um, and there's this comment made on page 82 that it's unlikely that a single data format 
uh, will support all the needs of a learning health system. This, however, is exactly what RDF does if we modify that slightly so that it doesn't say data format, it is an information representation because RDF doesn't care about data formats, but it does care about information content, okay? So if we take that nuance uh, and we recognize that there's a difference between information content and data format, um, then this is really what RDF does and why RDF uh, shines and why RDF can really help address this problem. This was the motivation, this was the reason for the Yosemite Manifesto that was put out by that uh, workshop. And the, uh, the whole point of the Yosemite Project Roadmap is to show how to do this. Okay, so another comment um, about the ONC Roadmap. Uh, I suggest that there's a bit more focus on data. One, one of the parts of the roadmap mentions interoperability of processes and workflows. And I don't wanna say that those don't matter at all, but I do wanna say that data interoperability is far more important. And, you know, there was this uh, saying you might've heard, uh, applications come and go, but data lives forever. And, you know, over time you might change that instead of talking about applications, maybe you cross that out and talk about workflows, come and go, but data lives forever. And then you maybe decide, well, okay, let, we're gonna abstract away from workflows and we're just gonna talk about a collection of services, right, in a service-oriented architecture. But then you realize, okay, well, you know, services actually come and go, but data lives forever. So then again, you try to abstract farther away and you say, okay, well, let's just talk about APIs then. But APIs themselves come and go, but data lives forever. Data is really what matters. I, wa I do want to call out a kudo here. Um, there was mention of RESTful interfaces uh, in the roadmap. That's really good. Um, REST stands for Representational State uh, Transfer. It's, it is very important. REST is strongly associated with the use of HTTP as a protocol, but it's way more than just HTTP. Um, it acts as a uniform interface or API, and it facilitates a data-centric or what is sometimes called a resource-centric view of the way of looking at problems and solving uh, uh, application problems and data exchange problems and things like that. And it obviates the need for many specialized protocols. So. I would suggest that there's a bit that there be a bit more emphasis put on the use of restful interfaces. Okay, another very specific suggestion is one thing that's needed is uh, stable URIs for concepts. When we're using RDF to represent uh, information content, we use URIs to uh, as unique identifiers of concepts. But various uh, vocabularies, uh, medical vocabularies and healthcare vocabularies have our RDF representations, but they are not well standardized yet in terms of what URIs are considered uh, authoritative. It would be a good idea to endorse the use of linked data principles here, which I won't have time to get into, and to encourage the various organizations that produce vocab healthcare related vocabularies to publish sta uh, stable URIs for all of their concepts in their vocabularies. Furthermore, every concept URI should link to its authoritative definition. This is following linked data principles so that uh, you can very easily look up the authoritative definition of that concept and so that everybody who's using those uh, terms or those concepts from that vocabulary can very easily verify that they are using the same concepts, the same definitions. But these authoritative definitions should not just be for human purposes, but also for machine purposes. So they need to be both human and machine oriented. And there are some standard ways to do this, which I won't get into. A second thing is that these definitions need to be free and open. There need to be no IP barriers involved in accessing the definitions of concepts in a vocabulary. And I talked about that a moment ago in terms of 
uh, having no IP barriers to interoperability. Sort of stepping up a level, general suggestions. Uh, one obvious suggestion is to support the Yosemite project. It, it addresses a very um, specific slice of the overall interoperability problem. Um, it would be very good if the ONC actually recognized RDF as a common semantic layer, as a universal information representation. Uh, I would strongly encourage the ONC to do more on stronger policies, incentives for interoperability, and also reducing the barriers to interoperability, having free and open, encouraging the use of free and open standards in healthcare. Okay, overall report card for the ONC roadmap. What I would say, I would give it uh, the roadmap an A plus in terms of its uh, scope and vision. I think it's really, really an awesome uh, effort. I think the problem insight that is displayed in this roadmap is also really excellent. Um, the focus, I'm only giving a B because uh, because there's so much ground covered in the ONC's roadmap that it's not uh, clear um, exactly what portions really are more important than what other portions and uh, you know to in order to actually make these things happen all at once. <laughs> um, in terms of articulation, uh, the roadmap itself is, is, uh, is very well articulated uh, to the depth that it goes. So the reason this is a B plus and not more is just because it, uh, it does say what needs to be done, but it doesn't say a whole lot about how to actually do it. In terms of feasibility, um, it is feasible. The only reason I say it A minus instead of A is just because there are um, parts of it that, well, as I say, that uh, it's not exactly entirely clear um, how they would happen. And in terms of execution, of course, that remains to be seen. Uh, we'll see what happens on it. So this brings me to the end, and I think I had some questions already in email. So, okay, yeah, so here's one basic question. How is the Yosemite Project funded? It's not funded as uh, an organization itself. Uh, various individual activities that are involved in it are funded. Um, the Yosemite Project is really a bottom-up effort by uh, a, a number of people who care about healthcare information interoperability and want this to happen. Um, we have had some discussions about potentially seeking some sponsorship or funding uh, for it from the top down, uh, but have not uh, not done that uh, to this point yet. Well, let's see, another question. Um, uh, what if the ONC does not recognize RDF as a universal information representation? Well, then it's a lost opportunity. Uh, RDF can really help address this problem and another th question that people often ask is, well, what if the ONC suggests uh, in something else, some, some equivalent to RDF? That is a, a sort of a possibility, except that it turns out that if you start doing the kinds of things that RDF does, you end up, in effect, reinventing RDF. And so you might as well just adopt RDF directly. I see one other question in email. How can I get involved in the Yosemite project? The easiest way is to contact me or contact uh, other members of the steering committee. Uh, if you go to yosemiteproject.org, uh, you can. There's a link to the members of the steering committee. There, you can contact any one of us and talk to us, and uh, we can talk about the various activities that are going on and uh, where your interests and activities uh, would fit in. I'm going to say. Thank you all very much for attending. Please uh, join our mailing list. Uh, go to yosemiteproject.org and join the mailing list in order to uh, receive updates or notifications of future events.